Okay, our first panelist was a cheerleader and a theology major, and she made her TV debut on Ryan's Hope. She has starred on Broadway and in numerous films, including as Marilyn Monroe and opposite Anne Bancroft in Garbo Talks. Now, my favorite of her films, though, is Star Trek IV, in which, in which, you know what's coming, in which she saved whales for the future and saved money on her space trip through Priceline.com. As Annie Camden, she put her theology degree to good use as a minister's wife in Seventh Heaven, the longest-running family drama in the history of television. Please welcome Katherine Hicks. Hi, thank you. Our next TV mom started acting when she was a child, performing in A Christmas Carol, tap dancing with Donald O'Connor, and playing opposite Ma and Pa Kettle. I did that too. She did a number of guest shots on TV in such series as The Man from Uncle, The Munsters, The Love Boat, and she won the prestigious Theater World Award for her role in the Broadway production of Applause. But she's most famous as Annie Romano, a divorced single mom on One Day at a Time, where once during a break in filming, and I'm absolutely serious about this, once during a break in filming, she gave Valerie Bertinelli advice on staying a virgin. <laughs> Coincidentally, Val's new book is titled Losing It, I didn't, I only got through half of it. I wasn't sure with it. <laughs> Please welcome my friend of 30 years, Bonnie Franklin. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been neat if they switched your theme songs? Would you have still come out? I would have. Okay. Before becoming a TV mom, this next lady starred with a rat who ate people and later as a member of the Donner Party who ate people. <laughs> then she promptly developed her own line of skincare products. That's true, that's true. Her TV credits include Bridget Loves Bernie and Family, which brought her two Emmy nominations. To most of us, though, she'll ever be the hippie mommy in Family Ties, but she also stars as a hip mom in Cold Case. The daughter of Hazel's Whitney Blake, she is the only TV mom I know who is the offspring of a TV mom. Here's Meredith Baxter. Our next guest is a singer and an actress whose stage plays have broken box office records. And she has starred in some blockbuster movies, but here at the Academy, we claim her for her work in television. She's played a troubled teen on Ryan's Hope, a wise-cracking secretary on Martin, and a take-no-prisoners mom on Everybody Hates Chris. But if those who knew her could change the title, her show would be called Everybody Loves Tashina. And here is Tashina Arnold. If you look on the website Fame Tracker, it says the following about our next guest, quote, her specialty is snooty mothers and other bossy types. With one smirk, she can silently destroy your self-esteem. We aspire to her ability to crush a human spirit, unquote. <laughs> I don't agree with that because just now backstage, Holland was very kind to me. I asked her for some advice before I, I was a little nervous before I came out here in front of the audience. And I'll never forget this. It was a very tender moment. She said, dear, those who can participate and those who can't moderate. Holland is a, steen, a scene stealer, and she has managed to steal scenes with the best of them. Tom Hanks, Jim Carrey, Burt Reynolds, Kathleen Turner, Reese Witherspoon, and of course her TV sons, John Cryer and Charlie Sheen. She's played many roles on stage and in films, but tonight we honor this Emmy-winning actress, first and foremost, as a TV mom. Please welcome my friend, Holland Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, while still in high school, our next guest began preparing for her TV mom career by working part-time as an au pair. But before she started mothering TV kids, she appeared on the big screen with the likes of Cary Grant, Bill Holden, and Jimmy Stewart, and her stage credits are considerable too, having starred on Broadway in such plays as Arsenic and Old Lace. She won critical acclaim on television as an immigrant mom on Brooklyn Bridge. 
but she is best known for playing another 1950s mother in Happy Days. That's the show you may recall which featured a powerful young man who everyone sucks up to. <laughs> Henry Winkler was also in the show. <laughs> it's a Ron Howard thing. Please, please welcome Mrs. C, Marion Ross. <laughs> Our next TV mom was only 16 years old when she made her Broadway debut opposite Dame Judith Anderson. Pretty good. A few years later, she landed in motion pictures. She came to television in a number of guest shots on TV westerns such as Wagon Train and The Lone Ranger. Fortunately for us, this cowgirl landed a starring role as Danny Thomas's wife and thereafter became a legendary TV mom. A couple of months ago, I approached this wonderful lady, said I was a producer and had a big crush on her, and she was great about it. She called the police. <laughs> Her book is titled A Dance and a Hug, and I can't wait to oblige her when she comes out at least the hug part. Please welcome Marjorie Lord. An Oscar-nominated actress, a Golden Globe winner, an Emmy nominee, a Tony Award winner, a Grammy nominee, a movie star, a Vegas headliner, a Broadway sensation. She is all of these things and more. But our next guest also made history when legendary producer Hal Cantor brought her the groundbreaking role as the widowed African-American TV mom on Julia, which we alluded to earlier. And oh yeah, I loved her because she was just as bitchy as Joan Collins on Dynasty. Please welcome Miss Diane Carroll. Finally, our next guest is the winner of an Academy Award for committing adultery. She's the winner of a Daytime Emmy for condoning adultery, and winner of eight Primetime Emmys for playing a woman who is married to an adulterer who dies so she can have her own series. She won rave reviews for sexually arousing horses in Young Frankenstein, and was into S&M with Harvey Korman in High Anxiety. As her character in that film, Nurse Diesel, would say, this is a very disturbed woman. <laughs> she is also one of our favorite TV moms who began her motherly TV career in the original Lassie show, Cloris Leachman. <laughs> Yeah. We don't know Wait, yet. I, I'm, I'm the moderator. I'm the moderator. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry. Um, I'd like to uh, start out with a serious question um, for the panel. Cloris. Do what you want. Cloris. <laughs> you once. Who, who, Cloris. What? <laughs> You, you once posed nude well, for a medical... Watch, what? No, you once posed nude for a medical journal. True or false? Uh, yes. <laughs> what, what was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> well, they called and said this magazine wants a cover of you on their, on their cover. <laughs> the cover on your cover. And, and so, <laughs> I, uh, so where is, we need a picture. I said, well, I don't have a picture. Well, you ha I don't have a picture. Yes, you had I do not have a picture. I don't have a picture. And anyway, who wants to see an old lady on the cover of a nature magazine? I mean, a health, I don't. I do. I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> I wouldn't. So we said goodbye. And then I, I was lying in bed, and I started saying, I was up in Vancouver. What would you do? And you, I started a different head as a producer. What would I do if I owned the magazine? What would I do? I thought, well, if they had to use me, I think I should be stark naked hanging from a tree or 
and then I got all artistic and thought, well, it would be good if we're all old, old roots coming up, and old roots and an old trunk coming up, the younger and younger, and, and then the arms of the tree and beautiful fruit hanging. I thought that would be pretty. Great visual. You know? Oh, be quiet now, just a minute. <laughs> or. 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 A, or. Just fruits and vegetables painted all over me. <laughs> he, the artist and I were, were at my house talking it over. Finally, we got there, yeah. and he gave my daughter some money to go to the store to buy fruits and I'm vegetables. I'm sure he did, yeah. Did you see the picture? No, he wanted and to get your daughter quiet, out of I'm the house. Well, I'm yet. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then he started painting me, and from 11 or 1 that, that afternoon till 11 that night, <laughs> I had the bananas and... Oh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe what I, I had a pineapple here and a peach here. Oh, it was just covered with wonderful vegetables. You can look it up if you want. And uh, so that's what I did. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's all. I want to thank you for coming. Thank you very much. And, uh, Night. Bye. Have any of the rest of you posed in the nudes? Before I leave that subject and get on to the real topics, have any, I'm serious, any, raise your hand if you pose nudes. At my age. Well, no, and I, oh. it, does, it could be at any age. I don't mean like on a bear rug. Anybody? Have you been ever been asked to? You, Holland. I was, I was uh, pretty much nude in a shot of the practice, but they, I don't think they included much of it in the actual. Yeah. Isn't that like pretty much being pregnant? I mean, well, can you? Well, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It was it was incredible to to go down on the set, whereas all of you know there's a hundred people on the set. Did yeah. you did you had pasties did you pose naked or not? Pasties. <laughs> Hello, pasties. Well, that's not naked. Here. That's naked. <laughs> you know she's right. This this. I rest my case. <laughs> All right, uh, let me, uh, let's get to something. I'm interested because we're celebrating Mom's Day a little Wait, bit early. Wait, excuse me, excuse yes. me. Did you ask if any of us had been asked to be po I no. think uh, technically that was the question, yeah. So oh. I think you need to go around. I don't think everyone has answered. I know damn well I have you, you didn't raise your, You didn't raise your naked hand. I so. know, I'd like to. All right, go ahead, please. I'd like to show off. <laughs> Yes, I, yes, I was asked to. And did you? Well, let's not go any further. I just wanted to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little something about your mom, each of your moms. Did they push you in a certain direction? Did they encourage your career? And I want to start with Marjorie, because I happen to know she wanted you to dance. Is that right? Or My mother loved to dance, and, and she did. Uh, she was a dancer for a little while. She got out of high school and... Uh, went and took dance lessons, worked in the day, and she did a lot of uh, clubs and things like that. And uh, actually, an agent wanted to send her to Hollywood and did, but her mother thought it was Sin City. So uh, she got on the train, came down here, stayed overnight, and got back on the train, went back from San Francisco. She lived in San Francisco. I think she'd met my dad, I really do. But when I came along, uh, I always wanted to dance from a little baby. So she didn't have to push you into it. You liked it. She didn't push me, but she was very happy that I went in that direction. She was a Midwest mom. Really loved being a mom and a wife. I was an only child. I don't, I don't think, you know, I'd do these auditions. You know, I was a late bloomer after college, and they just, just looked like, you know, this is sad, Kath. <laughs> if, you know, but go ahead if you want to try it, you know. And um, so they were just really sort of surprised. There is a connection between them because of Meredith's mom. Can you explain that, Meredith, as to why you're sort of related to Bonnie by your mom? Well, I can tell a little bit about it. You probably know more. Um, I know that it's your story that, that it was really one day at a time. Yeah, Me <gasps> Meredith's mom, Whitney Blake, a yeah. mom in Hazel, very beautiful lady, great producer, director, came up with the idea Yes, um, she and her husband, Alan Mannings, uh, um, worked on it together. Uh, Whitney had pretty much decided that she wanted to do a story about the two of us. Um, I, I had brothers, too, but this was just a story about the two of us. of was a single mother 
raising a teenage daughter. <laughs> and that was kind of the idea. Uh, I, th I think the original title was, tw was 3818. She being 38. So Bonnie 18. ended up sort of playing your mom. I was life. playing her mom. I played Meredith's mom. I really did. That was what it was. I met Alan Mannings uh, in Norman Lear's office, <laughs> and he presented the idea and, and knowing this whole thing. And, uh, and that's one day at a time. One day at a time is Meredith Baxter and Whitney Blake. And that's wow. something. Isn't that wild? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Meredith, did, did your mom, Whitney, push you since she was in showbiz? Did she have that plan for you? or Not, not at all. Um, I, was, I was actually wishing I could come up with some kind of grand story where she <laughs> did, but uh, no, she didn't at all. I, I was never interested in acting necessarily. I, I wanted to be a singer. I did, I did take a lot of singing lessons, and we sang together a bit, but we weren't very successful together. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think I went into acting just as a way to get out of the house, and <laughs> it worked. So. Oh, yeah, my mom pushed me out of her bed. That's about it. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. We, I tell the story all the time. My mom has never been a stage mom, you know. She's always that mother. I did this, like, production. I started off in theater, did this little production called peppermint bear and I had to play like this fake kind of doll and all the kids ran off the stage and all their moms are waiting backstage and they were like oh you know Holly you were so good or, you know you were it was great baby my mom was like oh my god that was awful <laughs> <laughs> she said don't ever do this play ever again <laughs> my mom is my worst <laughs> my mom likes it it's good <laughs> my my mother uh, died just actually before I began uh, two and a half men mm. and she was a reserved mother and she didn't interfere in much in, in, in her children's affairs. She didn't comment uh, too much, and she didn't praise over much either. In fact, we always tried to squeeze it out of her. And she said, but I'm your mother. I'm supposed to love you. And I said, well, then you can still tell me about it. <laughs> but uh, I remember taking a hike up uh, in Holly Ridge Canyon, and, and um, after my mother died some months later, just before I began this show, and there's a great big sky and big valley. And as I'm walking along, I thought, oh my goodness, I will never hear my mother's voice again. Mm. And at that moment, I heard, hi, honey. <laughs> and I saw this like very pale hologram of my mother's face on the sky <gasps> wow. Wow. for just a second. Just a pale, pale negative sort mm. of image on the sky of her at her best, sort of like 37. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And I, I was like moping in the house, some fat 13-year-old misery of a teenager and, and coming in from school, and she would say, hi, honey. And I heard that, and I thought, well, there you go. Oh, that's, that's so great. cool. Yeah. He's still that's here. Great. All right. Great. I want to say how happy I am to be with this bunch of babes. Oh, I'm yeah. I love all you all them man. so much, and it's just, <laughs> just thrilling. I always say that I was raised by an immigrant. My mother was a Canadian. But, <laughs> was Irish, mother Canadian. Was a Canadian. And, <laughs> but she, I was raised on the immigrant talk. You gotta be somebody, get somewhere, become, you know, all that stuff. And so I, uh, I'm the middle child. I think it helps to be the middle child. So I, uh, I, I will, you know, and so I was so much like that. My father would line us up at the refrigerator and there would be spoonfuls of cod liver oil. I took oh. everybody's because nobody wanted that. I took all of them. So, so that's that kind of driving you can be, you can do, you can be anything. I absorbed that. Then as, as the years went on, I got awfully tired around, 30, you know, <laughs> and I was tired. And then when my mother did <laughs> die when I was 40, and, and she would also tell great stories and go on and on around the dinner table and just wave because she was on and we couldn't be, you know, you had to wait your turn. <laughs> as soon as my mother died, I became her just as fast as I could. <laughs> my parents were very middle class and very old fashioned and anything having to do with show business was out of the question. Mm -hmm. Something I was not even supposed to think about, that's mm -hmm. for 
racy ladies and so on. I did the thing that my father hated most. I did nightclubs all over the country, and um, mm. he didn't approve of that. He said, those women are terrible. They even pluck their eyebrows, Diane. <laughs> 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 this man was really old-fashioned. How many of you have ever seen Diane sing in a nightclub? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I have. I'm so sorry that that era is, yeah. has died. Yeah, we it was such are. a glamorous, wonderful time. Have you noticed, too, when you go to Vegas and the great shows, that people aren't dressed anymore the way they were? Well, they're years naked. Ago. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> what is they're, it with you about taking your clothes off? We're talking I don't about. No, you just get No, 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 no. <laughs> I've lost every note now. I've, everything's out of order. Uh, Diane, if I can, I don't even remember that. But the. Uh, you made this quote to TV Guide some years ago. You oh. said, we all sell our talents to do jobs we're not crazy about. She said that? She, <laughs> well, I'm just Read quoting. it again. I can't imagine. Read it. You said, we all sell our talents to do jobs we're not crazy about. The emphasis is crazy. <laughs> now, they, uh, <laughs> I said that to TV Guide. You did. I've got the TV what Guide year, here. Now, listen, was girls. That? This is, no, Nobody's I, talking. I'm no, probably right. talking about television, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. about the Julia show or something, but I wanted to well, know. Well, you know, it's kind of hard when, uh, the only thing I'd ever done was uh, theater. So we, we still have that kind of hoity-toity <laughs> attitude about television as opposed to theater. Yeah. So when you're going to do something that is about a little nurse who has a child, and so, it's not the same as doing... Uh, I'm not going to say it anymore, but you know what I mean. So we had yeah. to make that adjustment, right? Right. And I, that's probably what she's saying. I don't know. It was so long ago. Well, it's in there. I don't remember what the hell she said to tell you. She'll come back to you. <laughs> she'll she'll come back to by her. her hair that she doesn't know what she's yeah. talking about. Right. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I, so I'm glad I brought these because it really added some credibility to the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sign this for me? I wanted you to sign this for me. Sign this on the, uh, we'll do that later. Uh, let's talk about, and, and everybody doesn't have to say something, but I, you know, if you want to jump in, I want to talk about equal pay for a second. Why? Well, I, because it's, it's just one of those topics that it's politically correct. Well, equal. Holland Taylor gets all the money. Well, we know that. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so not. Mickey, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. so not. Yeah. <laughs> Vicki Vicky Lawrence once asked Joe Hamilton for the same pay as Lyle Wagner on The Carol Burnett Show, and Joe said no, because Lyle had a family to support. <laughs> wow. True story. Anybody want to react to that? No. It's all a not negative. Not to that example, a but negative just to the... Reaction. Well, my, coast, my male co-star made more. What's that? My, I mean, the guy on, you know, Stephen Collins made more than I did. It was just a, a given. Did that but bother then, you? Oh, it bugged me to death. And I, you know, because we equally shared, you know, I mean, I wasn't just bringing the soup in. You know, I had as fat of paragraphs. I had to work as hard as he did. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think, I think we fought a little bit and it, it equaled out. But no, it was always, it was always Some of you more. did not have male, traditional male co-stars. So right. I'm, I'm not going to say everybody make a comment, but for those that are appropriate. Now, Tom Bosley, I mean, was he? Well, I can remember, uh, I was so thrilled to have the job on Happy Days. I had two children to support. I was a single mother. I was thrilled. So at one point, the producer, uh, maybe a year go, goes by, catch my eye, and he said, Marion, you're not paid enough. Wow. The producer said, wow. I, I didn't have a clue what the other ch kids were getting, you know. And, and so then I thought, oh, well, maybe I should get more. You know? <laughs> so then I, I decided to, uh, to stay out. Uh oh, whoa. I, um, I didn't show up. Oh. Wow. And, awesome. But pretty soon, Ron Howard called me and he said, Marion, uh, they're going to replace you. I said, I'll be right in. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, 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 that bother you at all? I mean, did you question, mm -hmm. well, you know, is somebody making more money than I am? Or um, Well, I mean, Bridget Loves Bernie, um, I made less for no reason. Um, <laughs> that's always, that's always uh, And on Family Ties, we had, uh, we had parody there. I, I know that I was trying to get a raise on Family once and being so unsophisticated 
and uh, they were balking. And I said, well, I want a car then. And they said, all right. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll give you a car. And I said, I'd like a Datsun wagon, please. Because <laughs> I had all these children to take around. So oh, wow. I looked hot driving them in a Datsun wagon. I showed them. <laughs> How many of you, at the point where you were starring in your show, or are starring in your show, did you have women writing for you? Can I see a show of hands? We had women. One. We would have, like, no. Mm, one. Okay, one that's two. five. Very few. Horace, let me start on the Phyllis show. Was that did you or which show did you have a woman writer writing your comedy? Do you think I would know that? Well, I took a stab at it. I... No, I was on the phone at home talking it with everybody at home, trying to keep things going there. I don't know what went on. I just tried to learn my lines in the nick of time. Well, I mean seriously, do you do you do you think? Do you think <laughs> this isn't going to work, is it? Well, let take off your clothes. <laughs> I can't hear. I think you'd look better. <laughs> well, you look good, but you know, better. <clears throat> Bonnie and I had a thing 30 years ago, so she can talk about that. But let's move on to. You were going to ask me something. No, I was going to ask you seriously. Did, did you ever have the sense, yeah. and I'm going to throw this out to everybody, that a woman writing for your parts, whether comedy or drama, would have written it better than a man? Just, just a quick, what do you think? Different, other. Diane? Better than a man? We had a sort of a format for our comedy. It was Hal's format. And Hal was always our, our main writer. So I didn't have to worry about that so much. I had to worry about, <laughs> it seems, you know, it's really a burden being black. Honestly, that is. <laughs> I had to worry constantly that I kept Hal aware of my son and what, it was, what was appropriate and what was not for this little boy to say to America. Yeah, I think he wanted to idolize John Wayne in an episode Absolutely. or something. You I made said, him change it. Hal, please, are you crazy? You can't do that <laughs> with this little black child who lives in a, well, we were in a totally integrated community. And he said, why not? I said, well, why don't you ask some questions in the round room? You ever go around and walk around in the black community, Hal? <laughs> you know any black people, Hal? <laughs> And he said, well, I know you now. I said, you see what a pain in the ass I am, so you know what you're going to get. <laughs> anyway, um, the reason I think that we click so well is because his sense of humor could be pretty raunchy, and so could mine. And we definitely were able to say whatever we needed to say to each other, like the John Wayne thing. And the other thing was he had me throwing a baby in the air once and forgetting that I'd thrown the baby in the air and going on with the scene. I said, I don't get that. I mean, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to explain that one to me. Wait, what happened to my brain that I forgot that I threw this baby in here? <laughs> and we had to, you know, back and forth. Was Hal a writer for Michael Jackson? Did that happen later? <laughs> <laughs> Which I Michael the Jackson? Whole, the one yeah, on the radio or the sure. one that... No, I think on both. Anyway, we'll move on. Does but it, it was really, there was no room really for uh, other writers. We had things uh, to concern ourselves with about our uh, our political correctness, that sort of thing. Anybody want to jump in? I don't want to force people to say, oh, I've got to say something, but anybody want to make a I comment about I want to jump in and just say, why don't we take the name tags off behind the window? They'd be <laughs> oh, so God. much prettier. Please take them off. They're driving cars. Ladies, Crazy. let's take the name tags okay. off the chairs. How can she see them? Particularly if it's not your name. <laughs> but, you know, one time I asked Gary Marshall, I said, uh, this is the this is uh, the fifties. This is uh, the you know feminine mystique is being written by Jermaine Greer. Right. And I said, can't we deal with that in the yeah. show? You know. I said, you know, poor Marion never gets out of the house. She she has no life. And and he, Gary Gary would say, you know, it's just fine the way it is. It's a little <laughs> bit too heavy. Just for it. They just ah. perfect. So I thought, well, I tried. I tried. It's not about you. That's what he said. It's not about oh, you. Oh, my heavens. It's not about you. <laughs> I have a it's great... about the boys. On Family Ties, um, Gary Goldberg had a fabulous cadre of writers that, that um, really served the show very well. Once in a while, we'd have a woman writer on the staff. But I have to say, I, um, I experienced it as nobody really writing 
in service of the female character. Yeah, in fact, didn't one, one time, didn't you talk about, I think in a magazine article, uh, about that you wanted to maybe have a lease, think about having an affair or something, and Gary put his foot down and said, no, Stephen oh, could do that, yeah. but not Elise, you're the mom. Wow. Yeah, he said, you're the mother. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> I mean, yeah, as if this doesn't happen. Most of the time they were uh, men writers. We did have women on staff every once in a while, for a while, for a couple of years, for episodes here and there. But it was a way of saying, I don't think she would do this. I don't know. I don't want to rewrite that. That doesn't seem right. The most, a, a, a very good example of that is when they did a show about rape. And um, the first act was about Anne Romano going to this bar and, you know, and a singles bar and fooling around and stuff. And then all of a sudden, the second act was she was raped. And, uh, and I went, whoa. If you're going to handle a subject like this, this needs to be handled. It needs to be certainly the whole episode. It needs to be some. And they went, OK, well, goodbye. We won't do that. Um, then we'll do a show about a single bar. And they did that brilliant episode on All in the Family when Edith Bunker was raped. And that was, and that came out of our show not doing it successfully and moving on to somebody who did it quite, really, quite a pioneer, really well. Uh, Okay. Catherine, you said that you have to have experience as a mom to play a mom. I actually read that you said that somewhere, and yet I'm thinking, wait a minute. Now, you played Marilyn Monroe, who was like this sex-starved, drug-taking, I mean, you weren't that, and you played that. What the heck did you mean you had to be a mom to know how to play a mom? I don't know. I can just... <laughs> I can... It's called Sometimes I can, I can tell when an actress, you know, playing a mom hasn't had a kid. I don't know. It's just, and when I played, was in child's play, I mean, I, I couldn't, I did, I, you know, I couldn't do it. I had to improv with this child who I didn't like yeah. for you know, <laughs> weeks to try to get some rapport because I wasn't yet a mom. And then once you do it, you know, in, you know, you just know how to handle a kid. Right. Well, good for you. That's, uh... <laughs> good for you. I don't know how to handle hey, them. Uh, well, if I'm going to get, I'm going to get shot by some people in the audience who wanted me to, to get in this question about ageism very quickly. Um, oh, God. Mar <laughs> <laughs> about ageism. Ageism. Not for us. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Die on the spot right here. Or, or not very quickly. Well, go ahead. Just um, pick me. All right. Marjorie. <laughs> oh, God. Marjorie said in a, once again, and please don't throw this at Marjorie, once again in one of these articles, you talked about how you should never tell a producer a certain age because he gets that age in his mind. Yes. And, in, and you said in the article, with something really neat, you said, in, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you should be able as an actress to play a range of at least 10 years. Oh, even more. 20, even more. 25, especially come on. In, especially <laughs> in the theater because after I did the Danny Thomas show, I did a lot of dinner theaters. But you were fired one time. Of, you were fired one time for being too pretty and then told later. Well, I, I you know, I went out, I was playing, uh, when I was in my 40s, I was playing 27-year-old people on the stage. Yeah. But if they printed it in the paper that I was in my 40s, it would be harder for the audience to buy me as a, as a young. So we were very quiet about our ages. But today, my Ugh. gosh, every newspaper in the world, every, every time someone has a birthday, it's in the paper. And, and I think that's too but bad. But you ladies, to your crowd, I'm not trying to suck up to you. Well, I am to you, but... <laughs> But You're you, afraid you ladies her. can play any yeah. range of ages I've seen on in film and on television. Cloris, I mean, it doesn't bother you <laughs> to play any age range, does it? You can play any age. Well, I don't care what age you want to be. I'll be it. I mean, when you were 20, you could play an 80-year-old. I mean, that's, it's just amazing. That's right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. There's something. There's something wrong. <laughs> Bonnie, could you help me for just Horace, a moment? Do you remember uh, a show you I, did? There's no way to help with week, Horace. With, with, oh, who, it was called Wilma or something. It was a movie of the week. Willa? And Willa or yeah. something. She, she was a trucker. She yeah. was a beautiful girl. Who was that girl? And you played this woman with the lowest bust I ever saw. <laughs> I, I, had a, like, <laughs> I had a whole big extra yeah, part. And it was awfully low. And I you know? put a pack of cigarettes up in my throat. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember one day we were at a truck stop shooting. I had been taught to drive this big semi. Yeah. And it had flames on it. It was beautiful. 
And, but I had this great big chest and, a, you know, tight, tight, I wasn't naked. Uh, <laughs> but there was a, some woman with a baby, so I held the baby. <laughs> and I thought, no, get this baby away from me. <laughs> I had, it was just a little baby and it was hungry. <laughs> no. Anyway, we, we appreciate that to... story about ageism. Take these ugly things off. <laughs> That's just crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Hey, I'll turn her hand. I'll take those. Give me that. Sit there. But now get rid of it. Oh, oh my like God. An audition. Exactly. <laughs> Comedy has. <laughs> Anyone like to make a comment about the power of? Will you please? Well, I'm trying. It just isn't working. There. Let me, here, let me pull this up. Here, pull, pull that up. There. Okay. Oh, let him go. Oh, pull that up. Pull, pull that. <laughs> pull that up. We were stopped on the freeway the other day, and the guy said, get out and spread them. And I think that just created this whole... Kind of in the way. You put your feet on I don't it. want my feet there. I don't want the... The man that designed this from Universal Studios, he put that there for set dressing. He said it balanced the set. You well, had one in Meredith, or Bonnie had one. You have all these expensive shoes, and they're all covered up. Well, I'm going to get <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Sue. Jimmy Sue. All right. And they're new. Uh, last, last question because I have a special oh, ceremony we want to do. Yes. Yeah. Um, other than yourself, <laughs> other. How long does this go on? <laughs> you have a lot more questions? No, though. <laughs> I have none, quite none a, about truckers breastfeeding, but we do have one other thing that, that I wanted to. I have uh, quite a few answers more than you have questions. Ask the question. Yes. All right. Uh, <laughs> other than yourself, I think people would be curious to know, is there any other TV mom that you would have liked to have been? Because I know you were all meeting each other, some for the first time. I wanted Marion Ross's job. Seriously? Yes. You like Marion in that role? No, I wanted the job. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to play my part. <laughs> It'll be all right. <laughs> Any, anybody want to mention who they'd like to have been? We were talking before about how gorgeous we thought um, Marion Ross was in Brooklyn Bridge, and, mm. and we were just, yeah. and yeah. that was just yeah. brilliant. I would have liked to have been able to play that. I never could have, but she yeah. was brilliant in it. Meredith? Yeah, I, I echo that about um, Marion in uh, Brooklyn Bridge. I, I thought she was absolutely stunning in this flawless performance. But um, I think the show that, that I would like to have done, I would like to have been Roseanne. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Great mother. Because there was Great such mother. a real mother, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, she told the truth about life. Yeah. yeah, and there was, it was no frills. She wasn't worried about what she was looking. It wasn't about how she looked. Yeah. It was really about the substance and the relationship, and I really liked that. I would have yeah. liked to have seen you. Sheena? Well, believe it or not, I, I never thought about being a mom. You know, I, I had jokes with my friends all the time saying, oh, once you become a mom on TV, that's it. You're always a mom. But Bonnie, <laughs> she was a kick-ass mother, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I said, I'm, I'm like on the stage like a fan because I'm like, oh my God, I've watched everybody. And, you know, she was my memory of a, of a mom that I, yeah. if I ever played a mom, I wanted to be her. Holland, have you ever thought about if somebody offered you a part as a TV mom of some other show, have I, you ever thought about it? I never, no, for reasons I've already given that never crossed my <laughs> mind. <laughs> But, but the, the, the TV mother I really loved as an actress and also as, a, as the personality of the mother was Seda Thompson and family. family. Yeah. I have been watching at night, because I have TiVo, 
Everybody loves Raymond, and I think oh, yeah. 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 there, yeah. there yeah. is the mom of all yeah. moms, yes. and that's uh, Doris. Right. I thought you were talking about Patricia Heaton. Huh? Oh, Patricia Doris Heaton Roberts. and both. Doris yeah. And Patricia yeah. Heaton, both of both them. Done. Both of them. I, right. I just think, you know, there's so, so yeah. it's managed to be so real and so hysterically funny at Doris. the same time. That right. And Diane? I I'm, go to bed at night and I, I, la I go to bed laughing all by myself. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't have to sleep, shouldn't no, no, have to no, sleep no, by I, yourself. I don't. My no. wife is right over there. Oh, all right. My wife is right. Okay, wife. <laughs> we have some special guests here tonight <laughs> in honor of Mother's Day and in honor of these TV moms, these lovely moms here. And uh, I won't go into the whole history because we're running late about Mother's Day. But there is that old English tradition about giving gifts to your mom. And so we're going to bring up some folks that you know and some family members, real life family members. Bonnie Franklin had two children on TV, but she also had a landlord who acted like a child. <laughs> So tonight, her TV daughters are also joined by a great character actor who also played on Marjorie Lord's show. Let's welcome Valerie Bertinelli, Mackenzie Phillips, and Pat Harrington Jr. We know that uh, Meredith Baxter starred in Family Ties, but she also plays a mom on the hit show Cold Case. So joining Meredith's daughter Eva is the star of Cold Case, my friend Catherine Morris. Would you ladies come Yay. up? Yay! Very, very cool. Very cool. Who's back in that basketball? You and Catherine? Yeah. Walk right behind me. Thank you. That's so great. Yeah, let's give a big hand. My daughter. Thank you, girl. Now, oh, can't be the best. Thank you. Treats for everybody. So Sheena Arnold is so rough on Chris that we, I think we had to drag him kicking and screaming. Is he here? Is he here? Is Tyler James Williams here? Anywhere? Today. Yeah, I know. We've had a oh, lot of, let me tell you something, in, in all seriousness, a lot of these <laughs> folks really had to hustle and change a lot of schedules. I'm talking about the panelists and the stars, and That's really so I want to cool. thank you wow. for that. On TV, Holland Taylor is the mother of two very dysfunctional sons. <laughs> in fact, they only came here tonight. I don't know if they're here. I haven't seen them, but, that, but she threatened to change their will if she didn't come, if they didn't come. <laughs> is John Cryer here? Is Charlie Sheen here? I can't believe it. On, uh, on Happy Days, Marion Ross started out with three kids, then proceeded to have one removed from the home, never to be heard from again. I can't believe you did that. Fortunately, one rainbow. child did not disappear, and she's here tonight, Erin Moran. Marjorie, Marjorie Lord's first TV child was a little girl who went on to star in Lost in Space and The Sound of Music. Tonight, she is accompanied by one of Marjorie's real life kids who just happens to be an Oscar nominated actress. We welcome Ann Archer and Angela Cartwright. I 
Diane Carroll's lovely daughter, Suzanne, couldn't be with okay. us tonight, but two of her TV kids are here, I believe. And again, these are surprises to me. I begged everybody to come, but you never know. Um, she is the star of A Different World. He played Corey on Julia. I think Jasmine Guy and Mark Copage are here. Is that right. correct? Yeah. Jasmine! Oh, I play her mother on A Different World. Thank you. Though um, wow. though Cloris Leachman only spent one yeah. season on Lassie, There's without a good her, reason for it, I didn't take off my clothes. No, she did not take. <laughs> no, Lassie Lassie was naked, but without her, poor little Timmy and Lassie would have been orphaned. And so Cloris' real-life son, George England, has brought with him the one and only Timmy, John Provost. Yay! Woo! Yay! Where's George? Woo! Come on, George. <laughs> Will you? No, no, Cloris, Cloris. <laughs> you hold that. Let's get it open, George. A night at the Oscars, isn't it? Have we lost Jim? Okay. Barbara Billingsley, as we said, is in the hospital, hopefully watching the webcast now. She gave birth to two sons in real life and two sons on TV. Wally and Beaver are probably Thanks. the most recognizable TV sons in the world. And they're here tonight. Yay! Tony Dow oh. and Jerry Mathers. One thing I asked her is if she would have been here, what she would like me to say for her. And she said to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. And she really is a wonderful lady. I can just tell you one quick story about her. I was always a very rambunctious child. And so when I was working on the set with her, when we'd go to like doors and things, a lot of times I would run in front of her to go through the door first. And Barbara would always grab me by these little hairs in the back of your neck and she'd go, no, 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 ladies first. Yes, yes, yes. And I'd say, yeah, but I was just, if there was something out there, I could, you know, I protect you. She goes, nope, ladies first. So Barbara taught me some great manners. <laughs> How come you didn't learn it? <laughs> this really, really is a, a super occasion. Um, I, Cloris and I, we worked together for one season, and I think Cloris decided that she didn't want to stay on the farm and bake cookies for seven years, so. <laughs> No, I'll tell you later. <laughs> but yeah, this is super, and just wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Thank, Thank you. Just honored to be on the stage with these wonderful women here and wonderful children over here. Uh, <laughs> Miss Carol was, uh, I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to play your son for three years, uh, having grown up without a, a real mother. Miss Carol filled that void. I appreciate that, and I apologize to Suzanne for spending too many weekends over at her place when she wanted her own mother Suzanne to herself. Suzanne is my daughter. She was very jealous of this oh. Oh. And I just have to say I, I'm envious of Miss Guy for having had the opportunity to work with Diane 
as an adult and being able to soak that in. I mean, as a kid, I'm just interested in sports, but this one performance I saw of her on the Johnny Carson show where my hair, my afro was standing up in the back of my neck. <laughs> and she's just an amazing, amazing performer. And what she was talking about, live performers, and those are the people that have the goods. You can't edit that together. Oh. And yeah. she's just an amazing, amazing person. Don't you just love him? <laughs> yeah. um, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And I wanted to say, Diane, that um, I was very scared to work with you when you first came onto the set of A Different World because I thought, oh my God, I'm nothing like Whitley and she's not gonna like me. Oh, really? Because I had on combat boots and my air jumpsuit, whatever. Yes. Um, but I found that you are so elegant and warm and down to earth. And you've taught me a lot about growing up as a woman, a woman in this business, a mother, an actress. Thank you for having my back. Oh. So many ways. Mm. Oh. <laughs> it's really been inspirational to hear all these wonderful women talk about their careers playing mothers on television because uh, I recognized a lot of it having been the daughter of Marjorie. <laughs> and um, I think I was always proud that my mother was so elegant, so... I don't know, there was, a, there was a beauty about her, an inner beauty that radiated in everything she did. And uh, it, it, it's something I carried with me. And um, it's a wonderful thing to honor all of you for me to get to be here to honor you tonight on Mother's Day and your beautiful career and your beautiful person. Aww. I was um, fortunate to have two moms growing up. I was uh, four when I started The Danny Thomas Show. And it went for seven wow. years. Wow. Um, Marjorie always made me feel so loved and, and comfortable. And she was just, I thought she was just a beautiful lady, a princess. <laughs> so um, I, it's such a pleasure to, to come and share this day with you and to say <laughs> happy Mother's Day to all of you. <laughs> Mom, gosh darn it, I love you. You're the best. <laughs> what an inspiration. And you, you, uh, you just uh, light my life. Oh, uh, it's my best friend and my second mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Mwah. Marion Ross is awesome. <laughs> Sorry. This is so cool. I know. She is. It's true. I know, but I got to talk about it. Um, Sorry. Um, Alan Taylor, also awesome, I, I must say. Um, I, I think uh, there is, a, uh, obviously, in many ways, all these wonderful women were all of our mothers, and uh, you know, a lot of us grew up with them, and they were wonderful uh, uh, examples of, of amazing, functional women. But I don't think there's enough representations of, of real sociopathic mothers on television. <laughs> So thank you, Holland Taylor. You're welcome. <laughs> Pretty much what John said. Um, no, um, Holland, you, you, you teach me how to behave and, and how to see the world um, away from our show. Um, on our show, you teach me how not to behave <laughs> and how not to see the world, and I, I, I really appreciate that. Um, I have an amazing mom in real life, um, but if I had to have a substitute, it would be, it would be, oh, I love you. Wow. Happy Mother's Day, thank you. Gorgeous. Wow, where to start? <laughs> uh, when, I, when I first, I mean, Everybody Hates Chris was my first, you know, major, you know, show, sitcom, anything. And if you go back to all the old episodes, you know, in any of my close-ups or anything, you'll see me cracking the smile. Um, and that was because of <laughs> this lady right here. But it, it's nothing in a, in a bad way. I, every, <laughs> every, everything that every, you know, any part of comedy that you will ever see me ever do ever is because of Tashina. I, I, I mean, one of the, she gave me one of the best acting tips I think I've ever heard. Don't let anybody steal your shot. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> don't let anybody take your shot from you. And she has challenged me throughout these four seasons. Yeah. You have, I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been a great ride and we, you know, we've had so much fun with it and you've really challenged me to become a better actor and a better comedian and doing what I love to do. So happy Mother's Day, Mommy. And thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, isn't he cute? It's cute. <laughs> my own mother is fantastic, let me just say that, my, my real mother. Um, however, during the late 80s, I was surviving a stepmother who knew and not, understood not one thing about me. Why would you want to be an actress? Why would you, all of those questions. So I would watch TV and I would watch the show Family Ties. And I said, I, they have a good family. She, she understands all of those kids. <laughs> I bet she would understand me. She Aww. would understand why I have to wear tie dye. Why I want to do my hair this way. Why I want to wear those funky boots. And so I, I loved this show. I loved this family. I had this fantasy world that I could escape into this family. <laughs> and then to come full circle, uh, playing this loner girl who has all these issues with her mother on Cold Case, when I walk into the table read and there's Meredith Baxter who's going to play my mother. You didn't ask for me? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, this is fantastic. I said, because now we have this whole one-way relationship where I'm obsessed with you and you don't know about me. No, I'm dead. <laughs> and, and she likes to drink because like Holland, <laughs> there are some mothers who do like to, to drink a little bit, and it continues on, and next thing you know, they screw up their kids. And I love that Meredith was proud, uh, was brave enough, and was, had courage enough to play this really complex mom that has really, what she was, you know, a mom that was not the most spectacular person and woman, and we were more like sisters on mm. Cold Case. So I was very, I was so excited to work with you as a peer, and especially since you'd made such an impact on my high school years. And then that we, we just got to go on this journey together. And I was really sad the day you drank yourself to death. <laughs> As your real daughter, I have nothing different to say other than that. <laughs> <laughs> Except I'm glad you're not dead. <laughs> so. So I'll see you next Sunday for swimming and barbecue. Okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah, hey, we're on. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Well, um, having come from the type of family that I came from, <clears throat> I don't know if you're all are familiar with the way that I, I was, well, we're raised like a wolf. You know? <laughs> By wolves. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> um, when I would come into the rehearsal hall every morning, um, reeling from the night before, uh, dressed in black leather and dark shades at 14, 15 years old. And um, my gaze would fall upon these beautiful people and I would think, who are they? How do it know to be like that? You know, <clears throat> and um, although I didn't catch on right away, I did not catch on right away. It took me many years. I love you too, Bert. Um, you taught me a lot, and uh, it took me a long time to, to, to slam all those doors shut that you guys opened for me. You know, every, every door that was open for me, I slammed shut right behind me. But um, <clears throat> years later, I'm able to, uh, to get it, and I love you so. I just love you so. I love you too. Oh. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. Here, but I am lucky to have worked with uh, one, two, three other beautiful ladies on this panel as my mother or mother-in-law in the past God That's me. Knows. That's me. <laughs> you played my mother. Yes. <laughs> no. um, but this was all after Bonnie had um, gotten a hold of me and uh, as a 15-year-old young lass uh, doing the show that was uh, uh, about to change my entire life. Um, basically, I, for nine years, I had a master class in comedy and drama. And it was these guys that taught me all about it. And I wouldn't be here without them, plus Norman. And I just am so grateful to every single one of you on this panel for leading the way for all of us. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. How do you think it was working with these three for 10 years? <laughs> Let me tell you, well, you know, they start, you, you were what, four when the show started? And I was five. You were six, I think. Okay. Um, I'll tell you, she started mothering these two 
very, very quickly. And she wasn't old enough to be our mother, by the way. That's right. But don't get in the middle of this, oh, okay? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I know. I didn't learn very well. No, you learned fine. You learned... <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is that she just... The big lesson she gave them was Monday morning at the table, you better have stayed in that script for the entire weekend. And you could see that happening as time went on. And these kids were just absolutely wonderful to observe and, and watch and teach comedy to. And uh, I'm, st I'm still trying. <laughs> and so, to Bonnie, we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes. I want to thank everybody again, and in all seriousness, um, you folks have got to just know how much scheduling and working around things and changing things these folks did to be here. Um, let's take a snapshot and a standing ovation for this. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. They should give you both.